you know, I have a bit of a problem. With my talk, I wanted to convince you guys that elections don't really work as well as we think they do. But apparently, you guys already believe that. So, why don't we look for a solution together? I remember the elections last week. We all had to vote. And the thing is, that's us. We had to choose someone to represent us. I was taking this pretty seriously. I was wondering who is the person with the best skills to rule this country. And then I found out that my options were an elementary school teacher, a nuclear scientist, and a historian. I was kind of shocked by this. These guys, they don't have the right skills to rule this country. In fact, when they make a decision, I think they cannot adequately foresee the consequences of that decision. And I was proven right by that pretty recently. I think most of you know the long study fine. Last year it was implemented, it was a great idea, that which supposedly makes students study faster. But there were side effects. So many that now everyone is trying to get rid of the rule again. It's actually pretty funny. At that point, I was convinced that these people, these people that we elected, <coughs> they don't have the skills to foresee the consequences of their decision. But I also realized something else. I was looking through their statements and I found that almost all of these statements concerned short-term effects. Hardly any concerned long-term effects. And from a politician's point of view, that actually makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're a politician, you're supposed to have results within four years or you're out. But personally, I would really prefer it if after those four years, our country would also be alive and healthy. So these politicians, they're short on time. And at that point, I kind of got the idea that they're a little bit like children. I mean, children, they also don't really understand how the world around them actually works, and they also live pretty much in the moment. But this is kind of shocking. I mean, they are in charge of this country. And I don't think they will ever grow up. They'll never grow up. The system won't let them. But this was a problem. We're basically living in a country which is like a children's party, where the children are in charge. It's a bit of a mess. <laughs> I think we can do better. Now the first thing which I wondered is, don't these kids have any guidance of some sort? Smart people, they can go to for help. And they do. There are plenty of smart people in instances like the CPB, the Central Plan Bureau. And there are very, various other agencies like that as well. But apparently the politicians, they don't go there for help. Why else would their plans be so prone to backfiring otherwise? But this did give me an idea. Why don't we put these smart people in charge? Now, this was actually a really bad idea. These smart people, they don't know what the population wants. In fact, they're a bit like parents. Parents also don't know what their children want. <laughs> if we put them in charge, we will get a very well-planned event to what's probably the most boring museum of the country. <laughs> I don't want that. So what else can we do? Can we maybe force these children to actually listen to the advice of their parents? Well, maybe we can, but I don't think this is the solution. It's because we still have people in charge that are encouraged to think short term, that are discouraged from thinking long term. So this is not ideal. So at this point, I was kind of stuck. How can we improve our system? Until I realized that these people, they've all been chosen for a specific skill. The politicians, they are chosen because they know what the population wants. The smart people, they've of course been chosen for their bright minds. They know the economy and society and how to adjust it. I get the idea that we should let people use the skills they have been chosen for and only the skills they have been chosen for. So what does that mean for the organization of our children's party? It means that we should let our children tell us what they want. They should set goals. Once they do, for example, they could say, we want to go swimming. Then, the smart people, they decide all the details. They will actually select an appropriate swimming pool and decide on all the other details. It is important to remember here that these parents, they're always still accountable to their children. If they decide to stop listening and run off with the organization, then the children should be able to say, stop. We issue a motion of no confidence, and what this means, roughly speaking, is they get new parents. I wish it was possible in my time. <laughs> I think we should set up our government like this. So how would this work in detail? Let's bring up the example of the long studying fine again. In this case, all the politicians should say is we want students to study faster. And that's where the smart people come in. They take this goal, 
and figure out how to make it so. They consider options like fines, decide that there are too many side effects, get rid of the idea, and consider options that actually do work. In this way, we can prevent decisions with undesired side effects. But there's more. These smart people, they don't switch with every election. They'll be around for a pretty long time. So this will allow the government to finally think long term as well. And yes, this means there will be some necessary budget cuts. But it also means that we can finally, slowly but steadily, start pulling our country out of the crisis that we are currently in. That is what we can do if we let people use the skills they've been chosen for and only the skills they've been chosen for. Thank you very much. of the person to be able to lead a country like that? That's a very good question. There are various instances which already advise the government, and some instances like the CPB, they have the economic minds on economic matters. I think they can decide amongst themselves who is in charge. I mean, someone is already in charge of the CPB. They already have a system for that. We can use that system for economic matters. For society matters, we have the Society Plan Bureau. Then we can let them work it out on their own. And for the rest, there is no real definite answer to that question. It has to be someone that the politicians have faith in. As long as the politicians have faith that that person can reach their goals, can solve the problems of our country, then it'll work. If they don't have faith, then there will be no consequence, have no confidence, and the system will fail. I think that's the most important criteria. <coughs> I think it's remarkable to see that there are many people against the, uh, or this knife against the current system and leader. It's interesting to see your opinions. Mm -hmm. um, I think I saw you as well a couple of weeks ago at the opening of the academic year, is that right? That is true. So you have many ideas, and I was just with the coffee, I heard people like, I want to participate as well, but I never have an idea. So do you have some advice maybe for the audience where you get all those ideas? <laughs> 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 yeah, I get plenty. My advice is actually never grow up. Every time I see something happening, I'm wondering, why does this happen? And I don't just ask myself, why did we choose this person? I ask myself, why did we have elections in the first place? I ask myself, why do we have democracy in the first place? And as long as you go back down towards the fundamental questions, you will find a place where it doesn't really fully make sense. You will find a place where a small improvement can be made further down in the system. This small improvement can change the world. So if you ask that question, why are things the way they are, ask them about the underlying system, then you might be the one standing here next year and changing the world after that. <laughs> I don't think that that will be a problem. It might be a problem for a few years before there is a re-election, but after that the system will take care of the problem itself. But they then still mess up the short term. <coughs> they still mess up the short term. It is, of course, possible that these smart people, they will, will go against it. They would, for example, say, okay, this is your plan, but if you want to reach that, then these are the consequences. Is this really what you want? Is this really what you want to start up? And I hope that at that point, the politicians will realize, well, I didn't know that those were the consequences. I didn't see that, but you must be right. You're a smart person, of course. In that case, I'll reconsider and might come up with a plan with different consequences. Isn't it the case in this model that the indicated goals change every four years again and that the old goals get buried under over time? That's a very good question. Every four years the goals change. That is true. Then it's up to the smart people to figure out how quickly we can install those goals. For example, if you radically change everything, the smart people will say, well, if we radically change the whole economy, then we just can't, it'll cost too much money. Let's just start changing it swiftly, um, short. Let's start changing it smoothly. And if after those four years people still believe that, then we can continue changing it. But so. the, the new children will support that goal. That's true. But if they don't, then we can smoothly go into another direction. I believe that swift changes of the economy are not good, and that the people in charge, the smart people, will realize it, and they would go against it. 
inform the children, the politicians, that that will not be positive if we really want to go for a fast change. I see a question over there. Uh, yes, so you are talking about the, the fast changes, but yeah. sometimes fast changes are needed. That's for example, true. if we look at the recession, we are confronted now with this. But it doesn't mean that if you change the system fastly, that it could be for a longer term and be implemented, if you know what I mean. So isn't that, uh, for example, eh, we have now we have Greece, and uh, well, let's say, let's do it slowly. Let's uh, take those decisions very slowly, and let's implement it very slowly. Is it the right uh, thing to do? Isn't it more right to implement things faster? But afterwards, we try to um, take it for a longer time, the decision we have made before. Roughly. Um, so sometimes you have to make yeah, a decision very fast. Definitely. Sometimes for a long time, so yeah. for 10 years. Yes, yeah, sometimes you have to make a fast decision. And I think that's also an advantage of the system. If we have few people in charge that really know how to do things, that don't have to do, discuss it a lot, then we can make fast decisions for immediate circumvention. I think that's possible with this system easier than with 150 representatives that all don't really know economy very well. So I think that's also possible with this system. Um, do we have okay. um, well, I see one <coughs> problem with the system, and that is if you elect people who only indicate the goals, yeah. then you don't have any say in how these goals are accomplished. Like, um, say the smart people in your system come up and they say, like, well, this is, we think this is the best solution. Yes. How can you ever say, like, but we don't want this solution because this has side effects that we care about more than the small amount of smart people who decide this. How can you actually influence the decisions? Because if you only set the goals, you don't have any way of influencing the implementation of rules and um, uh, yeah, policy on how these goals are accomplished. That is true. The thing is, an extra goal could be, I don't want any additional side effects. Yeah, but the there are always side effects. Yes. But the way I see it, I often compare it with um, construction work. Let's say I'm remodeling my kitchen and I hire a workman, and I say, I want this entire wall green. And he will say, yeah, I can do that. But then we will get paint spatters all over the place. I'm just mentioning something. Then I would say, that's not acceptable. You have to find a different solution. Otherwise, I do not want my wall green. I think we can implement something similar here, because the smart people, they're always accountable to the politicians. If the smart people come up with a plan that's has too many side effects, the politicians can say, no, I don't want this executed, stop it. Yeah, but then you you still want to vote for the implementation of an ID. Like, if you vote for just the goals, you can never vote for, like, if only after you voted, the, the smart people think about how they're going to do it, then you can't actually vote for oh, the way to do it. So you wouldn't, you would be voting for an ID, and then, later find out that there are too many consequences so it wouldn't be implemented. Okay, so you're meaning from a, a voter's perspective? Yeah, for, from a voter's perspective. Okay. You have no influence on the smart people. That is true. But from a voter's perspective, you also never know what politicians are going to be like. The whole point of democracy, <coughs> and also of this system, is that you say, this person is representing me, he can speak on my behalf, and then I don't speak myself anymore. That's the whole point of the system, and that's something which we always need to have. I don't think that it can be changed in any way. Not in the old system, not in the new. Well, the, in the current system, politicians say that this is my plan and this is how I'm going to do it. In this system, politicians will say this is what I want to accomplish. And when I get elected, I will ask some smart people to figure out okay. how it's best accomplished. Okay, they could already confer with smart people before the election and see how things are going, but that's a detail. I mean, that's, I think the way, that's the way it works now. Yeah. I think we can discuss that over and over again. Any more questions from any of them? Yes. Um, I like your idea, but I was just wondering who will choose the smart people and where do they come from? How do we know if the smart people really are smart enough? How do we know if the smart people are smart enough? It's similar to the question that was asked here. We've got to have some system for that, and in fact, there are already current systems, there currently are already systems within Furia's advising advising agencies like that, like for example the CPB, they already have a system that puts someone in charge that knows how to 
generate economic forecasts, if they also generate economic plans, then I think that would work. I'm not an expert on how the CPB has organized things, so that would require looking into detail on that. But I think that's a problem that that can be solved if you look at those systems, those agencies. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Hilda.